I have a question. Which big chess event is starting this week? Yes. The World Chess Championship. And who are the players? Yes. I know Magnus Carlsen is one. Magnus Carlsen is one. And he's playing in India, so, so most likely he's playing against an Indian player, right? Yeah. Who, who is best Indian player? I don't know. You don't know the name of the world champion? My goodness. Yes. That's correct. That's what you were going to say? Actually, I was pointing to you, but Adi, Adi took this one. Yes. Anand from India is the, is the world champion basically since 2007. He won the tournament. That, wa that had all the best players in the world in Mexico City, if I'm not mistaken, 2007. Then he defended pretty much against everyone. So that's really remarkable. And in 2008, he defended against Vladimir Kramnik. And Kramnik is known to beat in who? Who did Kramnik beat in a match? Maybe the greatest chess players of all times. He beat Kasparov in 2000 in a match, but Anand beat him in 2008. Then in 2010, <laughs> He beat, at that time, who was considered the best or second best player in the world, Topalov. In 2012, actually because of some tiny bizarre system, he beat not one of the very best players in the world, but still, let's say one of the top 10, 15 players in the world, Boris Gelfand, that made it somehow to the final. But now, oh, I don't think ever in history pretty much was a world champion, I, I really think it's the most, was a world champion such an underdog. I mean, no, I, uh, I uh, just out of quick thinking, never in history. Maybe Capablanca Lasker in 1921, that's quite a long time that Lasker was such a big underdog, but Magnus Carlsen, which you, maybe, maybe for a reason, you know, you knew who is playing, but you didn't know the world champion. We can obviously take book and discuss puzzle and tactics and all those things, but you know what, we're going to have... 11 months after following the one month of the World Championship to do it day and night. But for the World Championship, we're going to give them respect and we're going to tiny bit see their games. So, what about the ages? Who is younger, Magnus Carlsen or Anand? They are about 22 years apart, I believe. I believe Anand is born in 68 and Carlsen in 1990. So there's a very big gap. Maybe Anand, 60, 60, I think 68, maybe 69 but really, really very, very big gap between them. So Carlsen is 23 years old, Anand 44-5. So we'll see how this match will end. This game that we will start played about five years ago. It is played in a rapid tournament that was played in Mainz in Germany. At that time, Anand was just tiny less than Anand's rating, right? We can see the rating. Anand is 2798 and Carlsen 2775. The interesting part is that Anand's rating is very similar to what it was then, 2770 these days. Actually, his lowest rating, pretty much I would say in the last pff, eight years, I, I believe since 2004 or 5, he hasn't been that low, maybe temporarily. But Carlsen, far, far, far above anyone else with 2870, broke Kasparov record. So really, big changes. Carlsen is 100 points higher than this match, this game, and Anand a bit less. So let's start with, we'll, we'll give one game for Anand, and then one game for Carlsen, a bit more recent one. E4. What's the name of this opening? Yes? Da? Yes? Sicilian, I can get that. Knight f3. There are many, many, many versions to play here. But we will look at this game. This is the open Sicilian, because white immediately played d4 and opened the center. And here there are two really major continuations. a6, which was a big favor of two of the greatest world champions, Bobby Fischer and Kasparov. The knight of defense, or the and g6, that was also played a bit by Kasparov, actually in the match against Anand, a match that was in United States, the biggest event ever, I think, at least. In United States, a World Championship match, which took part in 1995 in New York. 
Kasparov played the dragon several times now. Okay, so the dragon, bishop e3. Okay, we will stop here for a second. Okay, so we have castling, and actually opposite castling, right? Look, black black castled king side and white queen side. Short castle or long castle, or king side and queen side. Why short? Because the rook only moves two squares, and here the rook moves three squares, right? Always the king moves two. Doesn't matter. Always the king moves two. Sometimes the rook moves two. Sometimes the rook moves three. <coughs> okay. What is usually the character of a game that involves opposite castles? Yes? Why? why? That's correct. Why, 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 why would we usually have a more aggressive game that involves much more attacking when the kings are castled to opposite direction? It's true. Now let's think about the logic. Can someone tell me? But why would they be attacking? Because both sides will do right against the king. Because? Because both sides will probably try to get the king. I agree, but why? Saying that they will try to get the kings, I agree. You are very, very correct, but why? Why? why what would be the logic behind it? Yes? There are different sides of the board, and this enables you to be able to do what? To push the pawns, that enables you to push the pawns. If white king was on the king side, it wouldn't be that easy for him to push the pawns, right? Because then he would be weakening his king. But right now, white wants to push those pawns, and black would make effort to play here. By the way, what is the idea of pushing the pawns when the opponent castle to that side? What do we really want to do? We want to push the pawns, and what would be the goal of pushing the pawns? Take the center. But we're going to push the pawns on the side. Yes? <coughs> no, 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 no. We are not going to promote. I mean, you don't push this pawn with the intention of having the pawn on h8. Not going to happen. No. But the idea of pushing the pawns is to open lines and files. Basically, I mean, the kings are both well defended right now. Both of the kings are well defended. But, hypothetically, if both of those pawns disappear, let, let's just say black does nothing. I will just, just to demonstrate. Here. This is very, very identical to the position we just had seconds ago, only that what happened? The H file has been open. And guess what? Who is next to the H file? Black king. Black king. So we open files to have access to attack the king. For example, this would be an excellent move here. Already now we have ideas for checkmate. Let's say black plays again. Same thing. Ignores white. Take, take. How do we play checkmate here? Yes? This one? Agree? Queen H8. This is what happens when you open files. It gives you access to attack the king. If, if there is no access to attack the king, and this is in one line, really one line, the logic of opposite castles. You can push pawns. The opponent can do the same. Why you can push pawns? Because your kings are not on the same side. So you can push pawns in order to make, to open files, and then get access to the king. I mean, look, it's exactly the same position. But black is actually already lost here. Black is lost here. While this position is theoretical and being played by 
many of the best players in history. This position totally okay. Take away the H pawns, black and resign. Resign. You don't believe me? Let's see. Let's look at this position. If we put, just, just to get an idea what the computer will think about it. Let's put the computer for a second. It says the position is about equal. No, no big change, right? So it's not really important anything more than that. Okay, now let's go to our position where we have exactly the same thing but we just opened the file. Do you think it's going to be more than a quarter point for white? Yeah. It's going to be many, many, many points for white. Black is lost. Four points. Black is lost. Lost. Which means white is up four points of material. Actually, I think it should be even more. I mean, black is lost. Just because we did one thing. We opened a file. So, this is the idea of our opposite castles. 95 was played. King b1. Well, very, very simple move. Moving uh, the king away from the rook. Right? Just move the king tiny bit away. a6. What does black want to do? Win. That's true. But why did he play a6? How is a6 going to help him win? Yes? But, but why, why black play this move? He wants to push pawns by himself, right? It's not like white invented something, only he can use it. Okay, apparently Anand also been in this class and he knows how to play. So he played h4. Or oh, the opposite. We study from him and that's our way. Okay, but Carlsen played exactly I that idea in order to prevent. And now the game goes into very, very complicated territory. Too complicated. We will just follow it tiny bit. So white made f wanted to open the h file and black blocked it. But, well, white is not backing away. g4. So many times in those types of positions, you cannot be afraid to sacrifice a little bit material. And I use the word sacrifice. When you lose material, do you have compensation? When you lose material? No, that's why the definition of lose. You don't get anything in return. When you sacrifice, at least you want to say, hey, I give you a pawn or two pawns or whatever, but I get something in return. So Anand wants to get exactly, well, the open G file, the open H file. He's willing to give a pawn, another pawn, maybe sometimes way more in those positions. Take. Not a surprise, right? Where is Rook aiming? Those files that we keep mentioning again and again and again. Okay, Queen to A5 was played. I believe, oh man, they had some recent, some recent theory here. I think some, I don't even remember what they were playing here. Rook E8 is in some lines a move here. Queen A5. Bishop h6. Who can tell me what is the purpose of this move? Yes, Adi. Which defender? Very, very good. To remove this defender just immediately around the king. This bishop defending all those important squares over there. So if we want to have a successful attack, what we should do? Well, get rid of the opponent defenders, right? The bishop on g7 is a huge defender. And actually white has a, already a very big threat here. White has a threat to, let's say black plays this move, for example. Just a meaningless move. White has a big threat already. He can maybe take immediately, yeah. but also take. 
and white is threatening checkmate and if the knight moves well white can take the queen <laughs> for free white can white even take the knight or not no no why no yes, yes. no yes yes no can white take the knight the pawn Right? The pawn is pinned. That's actually one of the big ideas why we get the bishop out. So this is an idea of taking the queen. This pin, this type of pin, those types of pins, they are very, very important for the pawn. So already big attacking, big attack for white here. I think queen a5 is a bad move, but OK. Rook takes knight. <coughs> Very similar play by Anand. And already very, very big. Well, the threat is just queen to h6 and win the game. So Karls, black is already lost here. Because white managed to basically <coughs> break through first. Very classical game of opposite castles. Now let's see. Let's walk together. What happens if black take the rook? We always have to see what about capturing material. What happens if we take the rook? What is the, we will make it move by move. What is the first move to consider here for white? No? Queen g5. Excellent. Let's see something. Can the knight block? What happens if the knight block? Now we cannot take the knight because the king is not in. But what will we play? Yes? Perfect. Okay, good. So, black is moving his king. We will take, move the pawn, go back, and now what? Good move. Yes? Here? I like it also. This is why we open files. You see? No defenders. No pawns that are stopping it. This is why we open files. <coughs> so that's the problem of black there. That is black's problem. <coughs> Carlsen went for some desperation idea. He sacrificed his queen. Should I take the rook or not? Whenever you can capture something of your opponent, whenever, you have to ask yourself, should I? What is my opponent planning? Not just say, oh wow, my opponent, he just gave me a rook, go party. No. I mean, maybe if he really made a mistake, but you have to really think carefully, consider what he's going to play. Don't only think about your moves, right? So what happens if white takes the rook? Should he take the rook? Yes. Yes. No. yes, no, maybe, could be, we'll see. No? Definitely no? You want to change your answer? Reconsider, think again? No. Okay, what will happen if he takes the rook? Exactly. Would you believe that Anand also seen that? You don't believe that Anand could see that? <laughs> he saw that, right? Because if take, very good. Then this is at least an idea. Although white is, I think, is still going to be. I think still white is going to be just winning. This was played. And then he attacked the knight. Because he can still not take the rook. Now, remember, if the knight goes here, we're going to do the same trick. Check. The king go check. And we're going to checkmate him. OK. What to play here with white? Should we take the knight or the bishop? What should we play? The bishop. The knight, bishop, knight. Yes? 
the bishop. What would happen if we take the knight? What is black going to play? Let's say we take the knight. What is black going to play? <coughs> yes? Exactly. And the bishop is defending and suddenly I think black is better. Well, yes, beautiful. White has a knight up. But what is the price for this knight? Two pawns? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five pawns. Yuck. Black is winning here. Five pawns. That's too much for a knight. But do we think that Anand missed that? Not really. Of course, he took the bishop. And now he's just winning. So how did Anand win the game? He had a very strong attack that didn't lead to a checkmate. It's really important that we understand. Strong players very, very rarely get checkmated. How games are really being won, Adi? How chess games are being won? Huh? I couldn't hear you. What did you say, Adi? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All those big philosophical strategy. Practically, how do we win chess game? You have been a week in our camp. My goodness, they will fire me even before I'm hired. You don't remember. We win? Yes. Um, the losing player resigns. Yes, but how do we get to that? How do we practically on the board winning the game? Yes. Um, a strong attack. A strong attack, but it's leading to what? Thank you. Winning material. That's how we really win chess games. Exactly. Exactly. Black was in several lines getting checkmated. But strong players very, very, very rarely get checkmated. What really happens is they defend. The only question is what is the cost of defending. You, let's say, sacrifice a knight. Then your opponent has to return a bishop and a pawn. He's not checkmated, but you are up a pawn. That's really what happened. Sacrifice many situations, and then the defender has to give back more material. Winning material, pretty much. It can be a pawn, it can be a knight. Usually it's not that much. But here, yeah, white is up material. He has a queen for a rook and three pawns, but black king is also weak. It's still not that easy to win here. Anand could have played actually better before. But he managed to get and win this game. He's targeting the black king. And now take take. And which good move here for white? Yes? Take the rook. Take the rook? <laughs> no. What no. did we did we say that when we did we say that when we're gonna play something we're gonna think about the opponent move? So if you take his rook, maybe he will take your queen. You're not going to be that happy. Check the king. Well, check was possible, but Anand wanted to eliminate those connected pawns. You know? He wanted to eliminate the connected pawns. So he took one pawn. He's going to take another pawn. So how, the, so how is white winning? Checkmate? Material. And the more we remember it, the better chess player we will be. OK, bringing the king, bringing the king. Now he has a pass pawn. And that pass pawn is going to cost black his rook. Run. That's it. This was the moment that Anand resigned. So we have seen a very, very nice game between them. Well, uh, 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 sorry, Carlsen resigned. Thank you. Someone is listening. Very good. Very good. Carlsen resigned. But yeah, I mean, in my head I was thinking about the match, and well, we're probably going to see more and non resign. But this was five years ago. At that time, I think that, well, Anand was probably a better player than Carlsen at that time. I mean, Anand was, mm, I would say the match with Kramnik was really a great match for Anand. But Carlsen, like we said, at that time was just 18. <coughs> Amazing. So now five years, o five years after, he's coming as a huge favorite. Carlsen 
has a style. If we have to speak about styles, Anand style is, both, both of those players have a very universal style. I mean, they can play solid positions, they can attack, they can play complicated. They are, well, they are the best, best players in the world. Still, everyone has his, well, type that is better, more or less. And Anand sometimes plays the most complicated positions out there. Because he can, he's amazing, amazing calculating and he has great memory. I mean, both of them are super geniuses. Carlsen is tiny bit leaning to the other side. He can play everything amazing, that's why he's by far the number one player in the world. But still, his big strength these days is playing actually very solid positions. If we said that we can win games by winning material, this is one really type. The other one is just getting more space. Let's see this one. Played pretty much exactly two years after the 2008 match. And we can already see that, if I'm not mistaken, in the previous one, Anand was 27.98. OK, he made two points in two years. It's not so much. Now he's actually a bit less. But Carlsen already improved 50 points. He was 27.75. Already here, he's clearly number one in the world. So playing in a tournament. By the way, where is Carlsen from? Which country? Anand from India? In Norway. He's from Norway. And very, quite, quite amazing that Norway that doesn't have any big, huge, gigantic, or chess tradition, not at all, somehow has amazing, amazing player, the best player in the world. Well, OK. So Carlsen is white. E4, usually, E4 has a tiny bit more aggressive approach. When we start the game with E4, it means that we want a tiny bit more to attack. Usually, the nature of the game is more attacking. When we start the game with D4, it's usually more positional, and we want to conquer space. I mean, of course, there are very complicated lines with D4, and very, very simple and solid lines with E4. But the general terms, it will be more playing for space. OK. Does anyone know the name of this opening when we fianchetto the bishop? Yes, Adi. No. Queen's gambit decline is when we when black plays d5 and e6. Yes. The which one? I think it's King's Indian against d4. That's how it's called, King's Indian. Can transpose to some lines in other opening called Grundfeld, but okay. All right. Very decent play from Black, right? Black immediately wants to challenge and fight for which squares? Which squares Black is fighting for? The central squares, right? Which is very, very important for us to be able to control the squares, the center, right? Okay, there are many. This, was, this position was actually played in Karpov Kasparov two world champions that actually came before, well, Kasparov, we mentioned, lost to Kramnik, and then whatever stories were, but tiny bit before Anand, and Karpov came after Fischer. So several games were between Karpov and Kasparov in this line. We're actually there, Karpov took, Knight C3 were the version they played. I actually have very good memories from this opening in the world championship under 16 that I won. I played this with white in the last round, actually. And I had to win, so that's quite nice memories. And I took and played knight c3 and somehow won. Knight d2, OK. Bishop f5, getting the bishop out. Developing the knight. OK, take, take. Nothing dramatic is happening. They just exchange a tiny bit. Black is fighting for the center. Nothing too much. Very, very different type of game from before, right? Before what it was. Opposite castle, and immediately everyone is, start, is throwing their punches here. Very, very slow. White, one might say, has microscopic advantage. Why is that? Because he has those two pawns, as opposed to, as opposed to black, those two. So white has two central pawns, and black has only one central pawn and one tiny behind. But if at all, 
microscopic advantage. But for the world number one, that's what he wants to play with. Microscopic advantage, and if he is world number one, maybe he can make something out of it. Rook to d8, rook to d1. Well, we're going to put the rooks on the center files, where we believe that the files will be open. Does anyone believe that the f file right now is going to be open? But why do we, why we believe that those files might be open? Because the pawns are touching one another, right? The pawns are touching one another. Knight c7, queen a5. Is anything really exciting happening? No. But that's how Carlsen, that's, that's, this game shows Carlsen's style in the best way. Nothing, nothing, microscopic advantage, and at some point, tiny bit outplaying his opponent. By the way, what's the logic of rook d2? Why, why to play rook d2? Yes? Little bit, yes, I agree. Another thing, another reason for rook d2. Yes? What? Perfect, perfect, very good. The knight was pinned, right? We, we want to break the pins, right? We want to put more pressure when we are pinning opponent pins, and we want to get out of pins when we can, right? So very logical move. Tiny bit to double the rooks, but much more just. So Anand played very solid. He took, because this was, I think, a threat for white. White wanted to put his knight on this pretty square. OK. So we can tiny bit speak about strategy. White has pair of bishops. Black doesn't. Pair of bishops are not bad, right? Because they can control a lot of squares. But look what Anand did very smartly. Anand gave his light color bishop. So where does he put all his pawns? Where are all black pawns? Light colors. Exactly to basically replace the bishop that he doesn't have. He doesn't have a bishop to fight for the light colors. I, I just marked them to so. But he put all his pawns on light colors so they can control this those areas, the light colors area. Which which bishop he has left? Dark one. The bishop is totally not blocked. So they are complementing one another. The pawns are on light squares. The bishop that is left is exactly. dark squares. It would be horrible if it was the other way. Then what would he have to fight for the light squares? Nothing, and his bishop would be blocked. So once again, this position, you said double the rooks, you see? You play like Magnus. But this is such still small advantage, because black is so solid. Does black have any weaknesses? Does his king weak? Is his king weak? No. Does he have any? Nothing. Just white has tiny pair of bishops. <coughs> A4. Well, many moves will be played here. F5. Still controlling all the light squares. Queen back. A5. Yeah, I'm, I'm not certain totally about this move. But one idea that white wanted to do was to play C5. Let's say black does nothing. White wants to start getting more space. c5, and advance, and then prepare, maybe shift the rooks to the b file, and have this breakthrough. So if you look at this position, white's real advantage, or tiniest, is he has more space. Material? Material equal. Just tiny bit more space. The, this is how best players in the world play. How many grandmasters? There is no, oh, I blunder a queen. No, not happening. Oh, I blunder a knight. Not happening. Checkmated. Not so much. Of course, everyone blunders, but one out of I don't know how many games. But those type of games happen a lot. Bishop c3. What is the threat of bishop c3? Yes? Maybe 
But simple threat, Bishop C3, what is the threat of this move? It has a simple threat. Yes, Adi. To take it, not, yeah, attack and take it, right? Exactly, if white, if it's white to play, we'll just take it immediately. Okay, take, take, take. Okay, so something happened tiny bit. I don't like this move a5 by Anand. But what happened here? The central pawns have been removed. This bishop looks tiny bit more open, right? I have a question. Bishops, do you have a question also? When the position open, would it favor the one with the pair of bishops or not? If you have a pair of bishops, or if you have a bishop, just one, or two, would you prefer the position to be more closed or more open? Yes. Open. Why open? That's the big difference. That's where really the difference between the bishop and the knight comes into play. Look, in this position, how active is this bishop? It's really blocked. And this one. If you remove the central pawns, you know, the same, remember before when we were speaking about attack, and we say, hey, let's move the pawns from the files and see how weak it is for black. If we will do the same here. We will say, let's take this, this, and this, and let's take both ways, we remove the E, D, and C pawn. Oh, black is in huge trouble because white bishops will control the entire board. This is why this is already a bit nicer for white. I can see that this, bish this diagonal is not as closed as it used to be. Bishop F8, the target is this pawn. Why did Anand play rook a7? So the pawn will be defended. Take, take. I, I, I wonder if he could maybe play here. Maybe there's some reason why to play that. To me, bishop c3 looks, looks quite logical, actually. Hmm. I'm not 100% certain why not bishop c3. Now I'm going to be... Amazing, computer like bishop c3 tiny more. Yeah, bishop c3 makes more sense. But okay, not arguing with Carlsen, but I would play bishop c3. Okay, bishop b4. Take, take. Knight d6. Okay, how is Carlsen's style? Playing slow, weakness after weakness, tiny, tiny bit. Look how many moves the game lasted, 55 moves. Many, many of the games that he wins are long games. Like, no, no immediate knockouts. Okay. Why, why did he play queen c2 here? Yes, Adi. Perfect. Perfect. Because chess is a game of what? Material. Protecting and attacking. Okay, but he still need to find a way to attack this one. Let's look at this game a bit. E4. Okay. Black has a little weakness, but it's perfectly defended. What's the purpose of this move E4? If someone can tell me exactly, I want to hear the exact words. What is the purpose of this move E4? Anyone? There should be three words to describe E4. Yes, Adi. Control the center. Control the center. Those are three words. Not horrible. Not the one that I'm looking for. But not horrible. Yes? Attack the knight. Attack the knight. That's actually a threat. Agree. That's actually a threat. Something else? Yes? Just saying hi? Okay. That's cool. Yes. Yes, Adi. Three words. It starts with open. Open the position. Open the position. Look, this is a bishop. Last time I checked. This is a knight. The, it's tiny bit too close here, you know? 
If you start removing pawns, take this, 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 take those two, and those two away. Oh, white's going to be so happy. But that's exactly what Carlson is going to do. So he opened tiny bit this diagonal. Remove the f-pawn. And this is a weakness. So there are basically we see in the two games that we have two different approaches in how to play chess. One, go and attack and play very aggressive, go after your opponent king. The other one is, okay, you know, let's create a weakness and play slowly and create another weakness and see. There is no better or no better. It basically depends on the player's qualities. So, let's see. What's under attack now, after queen b3? The pawn on e6. King f7. For example, I wonder if it's a bit tricky, but I want to see if someone can tell me. Didn't Anan, the world champion, see that he can take the pawn, attack the queen, and even the knight defense? He didn't see that, you think? Or did he see that? He did. So why didn't play that? Yes? The book will take the knight? No. It could, but it would be a bad move. There are actually several moves to play here for white that I think are really strong. One is to play this move. Attacking the knight and attacking here. But I think, but I think the best move is just take. And suddenly black is left without any defenses. Something like this. I think, oh, goodness, there is a rook on the other side. So maybe queen d3, actually. I was thinking if this is a winning attack. I, I actually overlooked that tiny rook over there. Yeah, then maybe just queen d3 is simple. And targeting the knight and the g6 and the g6 pawn. That, that might be just a decent possibility and a good one. So he brought the king to defense. Okay, well, now, now he needs to protect, or at least he's thinking about protecting this one. So the knight has a great output. Very, very positional play. The rook was under attack, and rook e5. Some ideas of sacrificing and breaking through are already there. Knight back to e7 defending, and Carlsen sacrifice. So after a long, long positional play in battle. Finally, white is managed to win a pawn. Exchange works. And here is the question. If take, this was actually actually interesting possibility. But I think it is not going to work for, oh, actually, how, how should white play here? Very, very pretty. He's going to play check. And now I have a question. If white is going to take the rook immediately, what is black going to play? <coughs> black will have a very good move if white will take the rook immediately. Yes, Adi? Queen where? Queen d5. d5, right? That's, that's your move, queen d5? Queen d5. So which really, really smart move does white have here? He actually, white has actually yeah, several possibilities to win here. Yes. Rook f4 is an excellent move. Wha what type of move would rook f4 be? It's an intermediate move. Before we're going to capture, we're first going to move the rook in a forcing way check. And actually, this would even be stronger. Check. That's what you go check and now move the rook. Sorry, now check again, for example, and then move the rook and completely crush black. So we are not tempted to take immediately because of well, queen d5. Okay, Anand play check first. Ah, but now weak pawn, weak pawn, weak pawn. How many pawn islands does black have? Three. 
right? One for an island, two, three. Why it is? One, two. I know how to count, but your help is very helpful. Okay, so black king is tiny weak and pawn structure. Rookie four. Okay, what's the idea of h5? No, this pawn is not going to make it to a queen. But why, why, di why did we see, we mentioned before, tiny bit pushing the pawn. What is the idea? Move away this pawn and open root for the, our pieces. Exactly. Exactly. Move away and open ways for remove of the defender around the king. Okay. Finally, after all this big game, two things happen. One, white is up a pawn, but even more importantly, black king is totally weak. Of course, we could have seen this game much, 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 much slower, but all right. Why did black resign? His queen is under attack. The material is equal right now. But black resign, Anand resign. His queen is under attack. What's going to happen when he's going to move his queen? Exactly. Exactly. Very, very good. The knight will be captured. And if the queen doesn't go away, then white will be winning material. Exactly. Okay. Those were two games to have you tiny bit think about, well, bo do both of those players. Carlsen doesn't really play very, very big attacking games. He has some, but not really. You'd usually, those type of games are much more relying on positional. Anand? played everything, both very big attacking games, many positional games. Huge, huge favorite, Carlson, for the match. Mm -hmm.